What is going on everyone? This is Coach here and this is our Halloween special GM mode. It's our expansion GM. So 32 teams in the league. The Alaska Ghouls, our star player Alec Martinez. And uh, yeah, so last episode we did the introduction. We showed you the team, Halloween theme. We've got pumpkins, we've got Alaska, we've got bears, we have a ghoul boy. And now it's time for the NHL draft. Now, I believe we have the fourth pick here. Um, yeah, so we're just going to jump into it. We haven't done any scouting. There's been nothing. So we're just going to jump into it, see what random generated players uh, are going to be steals for us this year, and uh, see what we can do. Um, no trade. I, I'm not going to change the block. We're just going to jump into the draft. So let's start it up. All right. So I think we do have the fourth pick, or do we have the sixth? We have the fourth. Okay, fourth pick. Uh, any other ones? I don't think we have anything else. So I'm good with just sticking with this and going with the guys we have because uh, we can always trade um, other players here. But uh, let's just see here. Uh, let's just look at the draft class real quick. Oh, there's no data because we didn't do it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh. This is this draft. Okay. All right. So this actually won't be too bad. We can uh, we can actually get somebody pretty good. Uh, we could go with like Cal Foot. It would be, oh man, it would be nice to jump up and get Patrick or uh, Pichier. Yeah, because right now it has us getting Anderson. But it says he's a high top nine. I think he's just a high top six. Hiskinen would be pretty cool. Having the fourth pick kind of sucks because we don't really know if they're going to pick somebody else over here. But, yeah. Okay. So, I, th I think it should be all right, though. I think we can... I think we can bring something out of this. I think we can actually get something out. It would be nice to get somebody like Patrick, wouldn't it? Or Hishier. That would be really nice, actually. Let's let's try to see. Let's see if we can trade for this first overall, which the Rangers have. Oh, it's the Coyotes. They really, they don't want to give that up. And that's a huge trade value. Yeah, we there's there's almost no way we could do this. We'd have to trade our first. We'd have to basically trade players we're actually going to use, which would suck. And we could trade Myers and our first, because we've got a lot of top four guys that can play. Because I'd want to bring some of these other lower guys down. Like, I'd rather probably play Bogosian in the top four than Myers. They only want Polka, though, but we're, we're keeping Polka. So we could do Myers and our first and get the very first overall pick and get her Hishier. I mean, we could honestly probably do Myers and... Yeah, probably not. We'd have to do our first overall pick. That sucks, because it would be cool to have two first, but if we're get Yeah, I mean, that might actually go through. They don't want either of these, though. Because we could do that, and then we get he sheer for sure. I'm saying it a million different ways. I know I said it a million different ways in our podcast about him. Let's see if this goes through. I, I mean, I'd do it. Um, Yeah. So let's see. They they want a little bit more. We, we need our picks, though. So I don't want to trade too many other picks. We can trade players. Yeah, let's see if they want any other players. If they want... Okay, they want Cedric Paquette... Zingle. I'd rather do Paquette. I don't want to do Polka. Cedric Paquette. Center grinder. That's like a player I'd love to have, though. His faceoffs are terrible, so let's get rid of him. Um, they would have more than 45. Really? It's the draft. They're not gonna they gotta re-sign people after this. Oh, that sucks. So I'd have to get somebody out of them. There's nobody, right? There's going to be nobody. 
I get Nick Jensen. He's always actually a fun one to have. It's like a seventh D. Um, yeah, let's see if we can do it. And we'll throw in that seventh as well. Because remember, guys, we're trading up for an elite center, our center of the future. We're rebuilding. Remember, we got to do this. See if that goes through. Yeah. Seventh. Uh, let's see if instead of doing two picks, we could do fifth. I know we don't want to get rid of too many things. Yeah, they really don't want to get rid of either of these guys. All right. Well, that sucks. I don't think we'll be able to, to trade up to that point. And I know there's players that we could use. Do they want to get rid of it? Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't see the Canucks wanting to get rid of. Actually, that's pretty that's way less trade value, isn't it? Yeah, that actually is. We could probably get this one. They don't want Myers though. That's the problem. Um, we're going to use Polak. Yeah, we're going to use him. We're going to use Pouliot and Poka. They really don't want anything worth like, well, they want everything worth a lot. Why wouldn't you guys want Myers? Myers would be good for you guys to have. I mean, honestly, though, we could probably swindle them with... Who's this other guy they want it? Wait, do we have any goaltenders? Oh, uh, yeah, they don't want any. Um... Yeah, I'd rather play. Ah, that's it's so tough. It's it's like we might as well just go for our fourth and not get rid of too many of these other guys that we might need. We could do Paquette, which they want. And if we did our first, we need like one more decent trade value thing. That's that's kind of the problem, and I don't want to get rid of our second, because basically at this point I think we're trading for Patrick. Because he share goes first. He she. I'm just gonna say he she for now on. From now on, like it's uh, French. I know it's not, but um, probably want to keep Tierney. Man, there's just a lot of guys that we want to still keep, which is the problem. Because I mean, these are one, two, right? And then we'd play this guy, our low elite, probably there too. And we just play him with Bogosian. So Myers is out of the fold. You know, we just picked him up for trade value. I think I said that in the last video. We're just picking him up to trade. So, like, we could do this get the second overall pick. We get either Patrick or Hiche. So let's see if they, they want to do this. I think they I think they would. Yeah, they, they just woefully insufficient woefully really you're moving back two spots buddy i'm adding a seventh and if it doesn't work we're drafting fourth yep i can't do it guys we're a rebuilder we can't give up a ton of draft picks and uh we can't grab a bunch of subpar players just to get a uh you know a, a medium elite or something like that like there'll be somebody available so let's see here yeah, he she goes first, and then Patrick. So either of these guys would have been great to build around. I don't doubt that, and I know it's, you know, this is a fantasy GM, kind of. You know, it's an expansion, so we want to go for things that maybe wouldn't be totally, uh, you know, I mean, I guess it is doable, and it's realistic, but, you know, a team like Vancouver needs somebody like this, and a team like the Rangers needs somebody like this at this point in the career so it's like well they're just not it's not, not gonna happen and they go with Hiskinen, which would have been nice but uh yeah let's let's make this pick here see who's available oh man okay anderson Pedersen, yamamoto now i know velarde is pretty good but uh yeah let's see here All right, guys, we're back here. Uh, I think I was peeking on my audio before. So if the first part of this video has weird sounds, sorry about that. Um, the 
waveforms look okay, but there's a couple peaks in there. But we're back. I just took a timeout because it was I didn't even notice the clock was running down. I thought I had it paused there when I uh, saw the the spike. But uh, we did take a timeout with like 30 seconds left, so we should be good. I think there's about six minutes here, so it, had, oh, it must have been a minute or so left. So we should be good. Um, but yeah, I think the best person to take in the 2017 draft is, uh, Velarde when you get to this point. So we're going to go with Velarde. Um, I, th I believe he's a medium elite, so we should be good there. We could take foot, which would actually be a pretty good pick. Um, I just think that he might, uh, you know, we can, we can always try to find a, a defenseman at some other point. Uh, so I think we should be good. Yeah, I think audio should be good. Sorry about that. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and take them and uh, build our franchise around the center. Awesome. Velarde's top six now? Oh, no. Oh, did I just mess up? That is the worst. Oh, no. Okay, guys, well, we got to live with it. I th There must have been an update because I feel like he was elite before at the beginning of this year when we did the 17 draft so whatever we'll deal with it we'll figure it out sorry if you guys were screaming at the screen but uh yeah that's a that's actually a tough one so let's sim through uh the top 10 picks oh i should have just taken Patterson. what am i doing with my life guys what am i doing they switch it up i'm terrible at drafting this is why i need to just take the next guy they say should be picked it's not yeah, we should have taken foot. Look at that. All right, so that's what the uh, it, the lineup looks like. I mean, obviously Villardi can get good, but look at Patterson, center playmaker, sixty seven overall and medium elite. We would have had a great player in Patterson. Ah, that is a rough one. So let's get to the next pick here. Uh, at least at least it's not a rigged rigged draft. You guys know that I'm just terrible at drafting. <laughs> oh God, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, man. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Uh, should we get Liljegren here? Would make my uh, Toronto fans happy, right? I think he's top four. That might be a good one to just grab and go with there. I'm uh, I'm sure we could do like Comtios or something like that. Uh, because, or Comtois. But uh, Liljegren would be a cool one to grab for you guys. I know you guys like him a lot. So let's, yeah, let's just snag him here. Let's go for it. Low elite. There we go. Cool. Well, we did get an elite in the second round. It's not bad at all. Let's go to the next pick here. We're just going to make all these picks. Um, so they want our fourth round for their fourth round in their fifth round. So they want to move up by about 12 picks here. Um, I mean, we get an extra pick, but I'm going to decline it because I, I just want to stay the course for now. Sorry, guys. Just want to stay the course. Stay in the course. I should have looked back at the previous picks. We got three minutes. I'll, I'll look back here. Let's uh, let's take a look at this real quick. Ooh, this guy actually looks pretty good. Coolin. Yeah, we haven't checked him out at all. This guy might actually be pretty good. Might be a starter. Man, wouldn't that be nice if this guy was like elite? Elite, elite. His puck control is pretty low. But if he's got really good athletics, he could be a great goaltender. Um, I like this goalie, though. I feel like he'll be like top, like low top four or something. It just sucks not getting uh, any chances to like draft the people or, you know, scout the people I want to draft. Yeah, because at this point it just looks like, you know, I, I don't know. I can't trust who I've uh, who I've scouted because I I didn't make the uh, make any of the choices. Um, okay. Is this? I don't know which side this is showing me. Oh, okay, it's showing me the good side. Okay, so let's just go to projected here. Man, this takes forever. Come on, guys, speed it up. Here we go. Okay. Um. You know what, let's just do it. Let's just go for the defensive defenseman. Might actually be a nice compliment. Okay, medium top six, not too bad. Could definitely have been better. Let's see if any other elites were here. 
So we get Lil Dragran, who is an elite. Yeah, not seeing anybody else so far. Already seen a 70, so it's nice we got a top six in the third round. There's Hal Onan. Um, okay, here's a left wing medium elite sniper, but he's uh, pretty low overall. I can't look at him. Oh, I can. He's 18. Okay, so that's that's going to be a pretty good player. Uh, Di Pietro. Yeah, he gets good, doesn't he? More top 6D. Yeah, so, I mean, we didn't do too bad with this pick. I feel like there's going to be, like, a really good pick, though, coming up here. But let's sim to our next pick. I didn't know that they made you do this draft. It's kind of strange. I thought it was the following year that they make you jump in. But I guess both us and the Knights come in, you know, with whatever rosters we have, which is fine, I guess. All right. Um, does this Rose Hill guy get good? I feel like I've heard of him before. I could be totally wrong, though. Totally wrong. One of these high top six might be a safe pick, actually. But I have so many defensemen now. Now I'm starting to be like, eh, maybe we should pick up somebody else. I'm not seeing really any names I'm super familiar with. Is this, uh, yeah, Braden McNabb? I think he's a top six guy. Yeah, that's really all. Yeah, I, I don't recognize really any of these names. It's kind of just drafting from, uh, I mean, this guy is high league interest, though. So does this guy. I just can't. I'm going to take Rose Hill here because I just don't need another defenseman. I know we could trade him, but it's just like, what if this dude becomes really good? Like, I don't know. Let's just grab him. Who cares? Let's just grab, grab him. Low top six. Okay, that's not bad at all. Left wing low top six. Sniper. So at worst, you know, this guy becomes a good trade asset. All right. 53 overall. We'll definitely have to uh, let him get uh, get a little growth in there. Oh, look at that. This goaltender wasn't even on the projected. Carcillo, was he even up there? Medium elite? Oh, that would have been nice. I was looking at this guy too, so it's good. The guy we drafted, hopefully he'll be a little bit better than the high top nine. All right. Did that one guy, that one defenseman get drafted? Was it this guy? 7D? Maybe it was. I'm not sure. Um, That defensive, maybe it was that guy, low top four, so that's not bad. Here's Brain McNabb. Okay, medium, seven, so yeah, good thing we didn't grab him. I thought he was either top six or 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 lower. Uh, check this out. This defenseman, low elite. What what's the what's the deal on the low elites in this game? Are they uh, are they just not to be even used? Are they not worth it? I've he I've heard that. I'm just wondering if they're just used as trade bait and you get like a medium or something like that. Um, low bottom six, left wing grinder. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's going to be like exact. So he, he might be actually like top nine. But maybe we'll go for this McGregor guy. He's a sniper, though. I'd probably rather have this uh, as a center, a power forward. Because if he's bottom six, if he comes up to top nine, you know, he could definitely be a, uh, a third line center of the future. Let's see if there's any goaltenders, though. Uh, Lettinen. Uh, this is hard. I don't really know. When's, uh, this Lettinen guy supposed to go fifth, sixth round? If he's available next round, we'll grab him, but I kind of want to, uh, cause he might be a starter. I, I don't really know. For now, I think we'll get this, uh, How Howell guy. He might actually be pretty good. All his stuff's kind of in the middle. He's not really physical, though, for a power forward, so that might actually help his offense. 6'4", 178. He's got to bulk up. But, uh, yeah, let's grab him. That'll be nice. Nice Canadian Canadian boy. Okay, medium bottom six. Um, you know, he, he can probably be our center of the future. Let's do uh, let's send him a pick, see if they pick up McGregor. Medium bottom six sniper. So I, I'd rather have ha Howell. Because a sniper on the third line might work, but I'd rather have a power forward down in the bottom six. It just, to me, that's the team I want to build. So, you know, Let's see if we missed any elites, though. 
it's always fun to see what uh, what we failed at, right? A lot of bottom six guys. Okay, we're getting to AHL potentials here. There's a medium top nine. Um, okay, medium backup. Good thing we didn't grab them. I don't need a backup. A lot of AHL guys. Hullet being a fringe. Okay, a couple guys here. This guy's kind of got the uh, smile of uh, Delaney TV, right? Similar smiles. Go to his Twitter. Used to be Yak City. Um, okay, and then a fringe starter here. All right. Let's see if we can get a, uh, a forward. Another forward or a winger would probably be better. I, I don't really see the point in drafting a goaltender at this point in this draft. Two-way forward, high bottom six. This guy's medium left wing top nine. Let's actually get grab him. We're late enough in the draft where this guy could be a top six, like a low top six maybe, but we've only scouted him once. He's got really bad deking. I mean, that's medium, but uh, I mean, this guy could be good. I don't know. Let's just let's just do it. We, we wanted to get a winger, right? Low top nine, that's fine. Um, I'd rather... It does kind of suck because I'd rather have him be, you know, more of a defensive styled position, not a skilled position, but I'll take what I can get. And this is the time we're going to find ourselves a gem. Um, okay. Actually, good thing we didn't pick. Were we looking at Carson? Oh, look at this guy. Right wing play. Where was he? I didn't even see Tara Tukin. I didn't even see that guy. They must have just really scouted him well. Yep, so there was an elite back here. Not really anybody else, though. Bottom six sniper. That guy doesn't look like he's 18. That guy looks like he's in his 30s. All right. Well, last pick of the 2017 draft here. Um, This guy probably is going to be a 7th D. Uh, I'd rather go with one of these dudes. Hey, look, it's another Latin. In. That's weird. Ratman. Yeah, I'm really scared to take any of these guys with AHL potential. It just... This Elliot guy might be something lowly interest, though. Okay. I think... Yeah, all these are... We're getting into unknowns. We're getting into... Nobody knows territory. So, I think we just go with one of these guys at the top. I just... You know, without having any experience... Uh, scouting these guys, it's just, it's hard to to want to go with someone. So this center, high, bottom six, potential. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get a uh, top nine potential playmaker. That would be so nice. What? He was high potential? HL top six? Well, that's how you get burned. Okay, let's go through here. It will end the draft. Uh, I don't get to look back. That kind of sucks. All right, well, we do get an elite and a top high tops or medium top six in Velarde and Liljegren. So I'd call it a success. We definitely could have had a little bit more success had we brought in like Callan Foote or something like that. That would be nice. Two really high defensive prospects. So let's go to the resign phase. I'll sign these boys and then we'll jump in and we'll make some free agent signings, get to the season. And then we'll uh, we'll do the sim next episode. But we are going to sign some players right now. And then we're going to sign some free agents after that. So be right back. <clears throat> All right. So we got everybody signed up here. And as you can see, we're in the All Skaters tab right now. Our defensive core is definitely the strongest of the cores. Um I'd say at goaltender, uh, we have a pretty good uh, core as well. The thing is, we're going to have to probably have Subban play in the minors this year, which really sucks uh, that he's got to play for a year there. But I do want to hang on for, to him because he's most likely going to be my backup for Carpasalo. Because look at this guy, 79 overall, backup goalie currently, 23 medium elite behind Grabauer here, who's already 82, so he's going to be our starter. And uh, these two guys grow. Subban doesn't typically grow, but I'd like him to stick around. We'll keep him in the minors uh, until we need to. But 
as you guys can see, our defensemen overall wise are fine. Um, it ends about uh, here at Petrovic. So all these guys, there's seven defensemen above him right here. Him included. Seven defensemen. Uh, so that leaves in Myers for getting traded. Um, I'm totally fine with trading him here in the next little bit. We have a ton of, con we have 20 contract slots available. So we can make a ton of signings if we want to. And uh, I'd like to get rid of uh, Myers. I'd like to keep Martinez just to keep some of our uh, potential guys going. But look at all these guys. Like we've got a ton of of young guys coming up. We're going to be a great team in like three years. It's going to be insane. But getting rid of Myers now opens up some draft picks later. And uh, all these guys below can play in the AHL. Uh, with the exception of these guys who aren't old enough. Uh, which sucks, but that's alright. But if we go to forwards, our top forward is Connor Brown at 79 overall. Uh, might make the jump in preseason to 80, but I highly doubt it. So at this point, without any... Other players, we're probably going to just have to sign a whole first line because uh, it would be nice. I mean, we don't really need to tank um, this year, honestly. As much as it would be nice to, to tank and, and get a terrible pick, um, as in a great pick, but, you know, a very, very low pick, um, you know, it might actually, since we have so many of these potential players, we could try to be competitive and grow these players this very first year, especially Grabauer who apparently grows really high if you get them in the first year. So that's what we're going to try to do. Um, stay kind of middle of the pack. I know our other GM is a rebuilder, so I don't want this one to be the exact same cookie-cutter rebuild team. Um, I'd like to be more smart about our moves and kind of be like the Vegas Golden Knights right now, where they're actually tearing up the NHL. I don't know how long it will last, um, but that's what we've been saying for like almost every game. The only team that's beaten them is is the Detroit Red Wings. So, uh, which, you know, could have been a fluke, but the Red Wings did look better that that night. I feel like uh, they were playing a little bit quicker. But when Vegas has got the speed, so, you know. But signing a first line might be good, and, you know, we're not going to be a super competitive team with these, these players, but I think our AHL squad would be pretty good, and I think just signing players that look good will work out for us. Young, hungry players, um, we don't, we might need actually an AHL goaltender. So that might be someone we want to sign as well. Um, an AHL backup behind uh, Subban, but that's pretty much it. Ton of contract slots available. Let's take a look at the free agents. We did get everyone back. So every single person we signed that we could sign. All right, excuse me. Um, okay, well, we could try to get dry saddle, but I, I don't know about that. Giving up a ton of picks for that guy, most likely. Uh, we don't need any defensemen. Uh, Hansel could be our first line center. That wouldn't be a bad. That wouldn't be a bad one. Man, it would be nice though to get Drysaddle right away as our first line center at 21 years old. Wenberg is also uh, somebody I really a player I really really like. He's a great player. He's on my fantasy team. He's doing real well this year. But that might actually be pretty good. Just getting Hansel. Uh, yeah, great face-off, so we can put some some guys on the wing, just get them helped out. Just if we can build our top six out with maybe three signings here, I think I'll be happy. Because there's a lot of guys who are depth forwards that would most likely need to play in the AHL for any real minutes anyway, and real growth. Um, Burakowski is restricted. Oh, God, all these guys are restricted. I, I don't want to sign any restricted free agents, so we're just going to cut them out. Like, they're not even there. Excuse me. Um, uh, I mean, uh, we've we've just got so many defensemen. It, it's it's really tough to to want to sign that. So let's actually offer uh, Martin Hansel a uh, a contract. He can, he can help out our first line, and uh, oh, he's got a ton of teams interested. We can probably give actually. How much do we have available? Oh yeah, thirty million. Yeah, we need to offer him a lot of money. So I'm saying, let's just offer him... Oh, he wants four years, though. Would you do two years for like 5.6? Ah, That's really all I could do, though. Because we would need to fill in the next two years anyway. But 82 overall from 5.6 is a terrible contract. But look at, look at our... We're only putting out like... 
forty million right now. So we could always trade him next year. That is a lot though, but uh, we do need a center. So, yep, let's just offer him that. That's you know that's one of those. Uh, we could do Justin Williams, but I was thinking if we could get somebody else that isn't thirty five plus. Oh, we could get Dadden off. That might actually be pretty cool. He's got a pretty good. Yeah, let's get Dadden off a sniper. We can play him on the second line. Yeah, Dadnoff would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Two years, uh, two points. We'll do two point. Let's just do three. Two years at three mil. I think that's fine. Dadnoff will definitely come our way with that. Uh, uh, I don't really see much else here. Are there any? Uh, let's see the goalies. We don't really need one, but let's see if there are any. Uh, decent overall oh that's that's it that is the overall okay Oof. that's a tough one uh we could pick up one of these guys though as a fringe starting ahl backup goaltender uh yeah let's get this guy he can definitely back up suban down there and give suban a ton of minutes 900 for three years probably doesn't really deserve that but uh oh he's He's already 20. Maybe I should have grabbed this dude. Uh, that'll be fine. One year difference. He's a he's about six overall better. It, it should be fine. He's not necessarily going to get a ton of time. But uh, yeah, okay, let's see. We've got a ton of contracts to give out. That's that's kind of the thing here. Oh, we got to grab this guy, Sorela. He's always available. Yeah, a ton of guys want him. Let's just offer him the max two-way deal. He should come to us, hopefully. Benino might be actually a good depth signing. Have him in the middle somewhere. Two-way guy. He can help out with the defensive awareness. A lot of centers coming under us. Yeah, he's got a couple people involved. So let's just do two years for 4.5. We're going to be way below cap floor. So we got to make sure to sign these guys for a decent amount. Um, any, like, I just don't want to leave anybody on the table that might get signed up here. Um, we could get this Olsen guy. Decent face-offs already for a center grinder, so yeah, let's, let's try to snag him. Be on the AHL squad. Nick Shore? I think he was available in the, the draft as well. Third line checking forward. Eh. Is it, the thing is, I think we could sign... Who who else do we have currently? What contracts have we attempted to send out? Um, so two. So uh, maybe a winger. I wouldn't want to get Verbata or Kunitz because they're going to be bad by the end of the year. Tulutsky might actually be a good one. He's a sniper, but his defense awareness is a little better than a typical sniper. Um, oh, yeah, we have Dadanoff actually available. We've got one sent out to him. Yeah, I think I'd rather do Dadanoff there. We're just going to have so much cap space. Like, I'm afraid we're not going to have enough money out. Who could we sign that's... Uh, you know what? Let's just advance a couple days here. And, uh, yeah, pull those guys in. And then we'll just take a look at what we've got. And go from there. Because if we get a, uh, you know, if we get a couple of these guys signed, okay, Olsen comes over. So we got all our prospects in. Let's see if we get the big guns in. The Well, I guess they're more like medium-sized guns in. Hansel and Benino and Dadnoff. All right. So if we go back to team management here, let's just look at our forward and defensive core here. Like I said, we've got seven defensemen that can really do something here. and if we, But if we trade away one of those defensemen in Tyler Myers, we're going to be way below cap. We, we have about $20 million available. So here we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the thing is, Nieto, Bermistroff, those guys uh, need to play in the AHL for another year because they're down at uh depth potential so i don't want to rush them up i'd like to get them 
the time they need. Because if these guys are low 80s, these can be great depth for the future. Yeah, so that looks good. And then Paquette, I think his depth is... Oh, he's a fourth liner. So he can play the fourth line. So I'm thinking maybe one more uh, decent signing, actually. And we should be good on the forward side. And then everybody from there can be just background. Um, and maybe we can sign some potential defensemen guys. But getting rid of Myers, that takes 5.5 off the books. And... It's just that we don't need him with somebody like Bogosian, who is growing, has better defensive awareness. You know, it's it's just a no-brainer between these two who gets eliminated. Because we, we want to limit the exact potential guys. We want to let the exacts like this guy, like Martinez, kind of coach the, uh, the front line and then have everybody kind of grow up in their place. Um, especially with these other guys coming down here. Lil Jagrin, you know, these guys coming up, it's going to be a fight for any NHL spot. So yeah, one more NHL forward, I feel like would be good. And I think I'm going to try to sign a winger because we have a lot of centers and uh, then we'll just do a couple more depth guys and call it good. So let's just try to, uh, let's try to do this here. And maybe the beginning of next episode, before we start the SIM, we can uh, make that Tyler Myers trade and you guys can just let me know who you want to go after uh, for that trade. Oh, I forgot we could what what would we have to do if we went for oh it doesn't actually tell us. I, I forget what the, the terms of this are in uh in this in this game. Because that would be nice. I mean if we could sign Dry Saddle 21 years old, I mean that'd be huge, but we'd be getting rid of future picks, which for me might be a good thing, because I'm awful. Um Okay, let's just sign, yeah, let's sign Justin Williams. Because remember, Burkowski, Spooner, these guys are great players, but they're restricted free agents. So, yeah, we'll sign Justin Williams. We'll do four mil for a year. Actually, we'll do four point, yeah, 4.175 just to pad those books just in case. And then let's look at a couple of these potential guys here. Um, yeah, we don't want to sign. I mean, we could sign. Sign. I think we looked at him before and we just decided no. Um, a lot of these guys are still restricted and kind of old. Um, this guy, we wanted to, yeah, we'll do this guy. That shouldn't be a problem. Eight for one year. Just a couple guys we can kind of throw on the, uh, the old back burner here. Ty Ratty, I think we picked up in. On the wings. As much, uh, we should just get him. I mean, that's just a good signing. That's why we picked up him up on the wings. And who else could we grab here? It'd be nice to get one of these guys that actually wants like a real contract. And then we could just throw it like Shane Doan. We could just throw him back and scratch him all year just to be taken up some some roster spots um yeah let's grab this guy i know we've got a lot of guys here that are defensive uh prospects but remember we got a lot of people to sign and we could always use trade assets um any of these guys look pretty good that's a fourth uh bottom six for this uh andrew ghetto He's actually doing pretty well this year on the Avs. Yeah, let's just sign him up here. What is he currently depth forward? Yeah, he can play in the AHL. That won't be... Oh, he wants a one-way deal, though. Actually, that's fine. For two years? Yeah, that's fine. Let's just sign him to 1.3. Get us a little bit higher up there. And anybody else? Anyone else we could try to kind of find? Maybe this guy? Two-way guy, he could play down in the minors. Yeah, for sure. Two-way. I'll always say yes to two. Oh, he doesn't want he doesn't want a two-way deal though? For the next two years? That might be a bad signing, but this guy could be a third liner of the future. Ah, I don't want to do that. I'd like the guy who wants a two-way deal. As much as we want to take up some room, it's just I don't know. David Miller, I thought that would be. Yurko, Polkinen, all these former wings. Hmm. 
Ferraro, another former wing. Um, yeah, I think let's just let's just see if these other guys sign, and then we'll we'll take it from there. I don't want to jinx us at all because that would be the worst. Couple more days. I should just do this on the calendar, like three days at a time, because it's just this game takes so long to load. You have to wait for that circle load thing to go away. Okay, we got Williams, Sumala. Oh. We offered him like the max. What the heck? Okay. Um, let's go to team management real quick. I just want to see our contracts. I wish you could look at all this in free agency. I don't get it. 38 out of 50. Yeah, we need to make some deals. And we're still below. Oh, dang. Okay, if we can make one more big signing, actually, we'll be good. I just really don't want to get stuck in the whole we can't bring people up, we can't bring people down. That is the worst feeling, and uh, it's awful. Um, you could sign, like, Del Zotto or something. Just have him as a backup defenseman. Bring him in when we need him. Man, it'd be it it would be a shame to waste that shooting category though. Uh man. Okay, yeah, let's just sign Toluski. Left wing sniper, that's fine. We'll go up to look, dude, for if you'll do one year, I'll give you three point five. If you do that for me, bud. And you know what? Let's sign. Yeah, dude, let's sign Girardi as like our seventh D. Because if we could, if we could actually make him just kind of sit at seventh D, that would be awesome. For one year, would he take 4.5? I feel like he would. I mean, I would. But he'd just be sitting. I don't know if that would actually be the best option there for a. For an aging defenseman. Yeah, look at all these. Uh, I'm just looking at the guy's roles right now. Every Yeah, everybody. Bennett, we could sign. Depth guy, yeah, let's just sign this guy. He wants just a one-way deal, so let's just give him 1.2 for one year. He can play in the AHL. I just don't want to clog up the, the top where these guys can, can play and actually grow. Um, depth defender here, he's 25. I'm just looking at overalls right now. So, um, Anybody else? This guy, De La Rose. Yeah, I think we could offer him one. What do you take? Would you take the max on two years? Yeah, I'm sure you would, bud. Maybe we could make a big trade for like a really nice player with the... Uh, you know, with some of these guys that we don't need, maybe. Because what if we got like a, uh, like uh, Edmonton always wants to give up Jesse Pyarvi or whatever, right? I think we have one or two guys still waiting. We're waiting to hear back from, right? Yeah, Bennett, De La Rose. So we got pretty much everybody here. Um Let's go to team management and just see what our contracts are looking like and look at the overall roster. 44, so that's good. Um, we could look at maybe a couple other guys that we could use just in, in trades because we do have the space available. Yeah, 9 mil left, so we should be well within the, uh, the cap here. So let's look at what our lines are looking like now. So here we are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12. Um, so I think somebody like Bennett, this guy's going to come up, or Paquette. So that kind of fills out the NHL lines. Um, you know, maybe we could could have signed like one more other guy, but these guys are necessary up here because of their salaries, just to keep us within. But, you know, if we've got a solidified lineup and we're able to keep it alive and be really riding the cap floor, Come trade deadline, we can get rid of a couple of these guys, and it's a, it's less risky uh, than you know doing that now. Defenseman one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see there, and then Petrovic. So Petrovic does have top six role. So Girardi's probably going to be sitting. Petrovic's going to be playing, and we're going to trade Myers away. So that'll be our seventh D. Will end at Girardi. 
with Petrovic playing in a slot like Myers or something like that. And then these guys down here are all AHL potential, even Ouellette. Oh, no, he's not. He moved up one overall, so now he's top six. Uh, that sucks because we're going to have to play him in the minors. That really does suck. But uh, I think, oh, that does suck because Petrovic, we got to grow him quick, so I'd rather play him and then Ouellette we can play next year maybe. Or we can trade both of them. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever you guys want to do. We can make those trades because remember we got a lot of good players coming up here, um, but if we stop at Petrovic, that's what one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, nope, we don't have enough, so we need one more AHL defenseman, maybe two more actually. So that's fine actually. That that'll be fine, and then here are our goaltenders. Everybody's a good potential guy, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. Subban's a backup goalie, but he's only seventy six overall. I'd like to play him in the minors one more year. So we just need one more depth defenseman guy that can play in the AHL, maybe be a potential guy, who knows. And I think that's really it. I don't, I don't think we need anything else. Like I said, I mean, our forwards, like, I think are pretty much covered. But yeah, let's just sign a depth defensive guy. And then next episode, I won't even, you know, go past what we're simming here. We can, uh, you guys can make a decision for me to, uh, to make a trade, like trading Myers, or do we try the Petrovic situation with Olet? You know, which one do we play? In my experience, Olet, Olet never really amounts to a ton, so that would be somebody I'd be okay with with trading. You know, um, oh yeah, we're doing defensemen. So let's see if anybody. I see Cowan there, but I think he's top six potential. Um, Olofsson, and then this guy, minor top four, 73. Yeah, let's just do Tenorti. Yeah, um, I think Olofsson would probably be better. Tenorti is actually, though, he's 25. That's the problem. Olofsson is younger, only one. He's one overall better, but he's got low top six potential, which does suck, but... You know, he could slot in and, and just be one of those guys that could really help out at 74 overall. You know, who knows? He could be top six guy of the future. So let's, yeah, let's go for this guy here. We'll just offer him. I mean, we could we could honestly just get both these dudes. Why not? And worst comes to worst, you know, one takes the other's role or there's one guy that doesn't or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I think we'll be good with either of those guys. And that would put us at 46. So any of these other guys we need, I, I don't really know. Yeah, it just looks like they kind of all fall off at this point. I'm trying to look for like younger potential guys. This guy's already a fourth liner, high bottom six, two-way guy. I'm just going to sign him. I know we might not need it, but it's... uh. You never know. All right, that's it. I, I got to call it there, and then we can we can make some trades. We have room available, so we could you know, put off somebody who's worth a little bit more for a couple depth guys. But at this point, we're pretty much filled with depth players, and there's a, like a handful of elite guys. So I'd almost rather trade like Myers and like two other guys who have decent trade value, and then get somebody like Jesse Paul Harvey or... Or somebody who's going to be really good. I mean, I don't want to get him necessarily because we got him in the Red Wings GM. That's just an example I'm throwing out. That's just somebody that would be perfect. And we could, okay, we got him again and Olofsson and Tenorti. So should be up around 47 contracts. So there are three available, a little wiggle room available. And uh, we're looking good. We've built a team with a lot of young guys. We're within the parameters of the salary. We've I think giving out good contracts with the most being only two years. And uh, yeah, because in two years, that's when we kind of really got to start going after it. Or when that, you know, when that stops, because that's when everybody should be up. Liljegren should be up in the NHL. And uh, man, we're going to be looking real good at that point. Velarde, everybody's going to be firing on all cylinders. So there you guys go. Uh, this was a pretty long episode because it had the draft and free agency in it with the resign phase, but 
you know, these are going to be a little longer, different format than the uh, Red Wings GMs. Uh, also, let me know if you want injuries on it. Riding the salary cap, it's going to be a little harder with injuries on because you got to worry about, you know, waivers and bringing people up. But let me know if that's something you want. I know that was something in the NHL, uh, or rather the Red Wings NHL GM. We, uh, you know, we don't have on until the playoffs. So once we get in the playoffs, they'll come on. But for now, they're off. But let me know all those questions and more down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks again for over 1,700 subs. Make sure if you aren't subscribed, like and subscribe if you dug it. And we'll see you next time out on the ice.